Hey, Bobby, do you think VTI is good to invest in? Well, do you think the stock market is good to invest in? Well, obviously. Well, then I'd say VTI is pretty good. Wow, that was totally unhelpful. Today, we're talking about two of my favorite funds, VTI and VOO, and how investing in these can be a nice autopilot into a pretty nice future. Well, I, I want to invest enough that I could just retire early. Hmm, how early? Like before the age of 65. Okay, so like in your 30s and your 40s, like before the age of 65. Well, if you look into funds such as VTI and VOO, you could grow your investments and at some point, live off of your investments for the rest of your life. Hashtag team no job. Uh, more like hashtag freedom. Nice. Nice. So I'm going to stack up in this video VTI and VOO. We're going to see which one is best for you or are they both a good investment for your portfolio? I'm gonna also explore a hot Vanguard fund you don't wanna miss, and at the end of the video, make sure you stick with me, I'm gonna go over a tax advantage strategy you could use between VTI and VOO. So if you're ready to get started, don't be dumb, tap the thumb, and let's get right to it. So if you would've invested $10,000 into either VTI or VOO 10 years ago, and that's all you put in, $10,000 you did not invest any more for the next 10 years, your portfolio today would have grown to about forty-three dollars to $44,000. That represents an annualized return of 16% with dividends reinvested. So just imagine if you would invest consistently what that could potentially grow to. Yeah, let's actually calculate this. So if you start with $10,000, you invest that. And then every month you invest an additional $500. Let's say instead of a car payment, you're gonna invest that money instead, $500 a month for the next 30 years on an average rate of only 10% will grow to an incredible $1 million portfolio at exactly $1.3 million. So let's stack up VTI and VOO and let's see what the big differences are. Okay, so over here, we're gonna do VTI. Over here, we're gonna do VOO. Let's first talk about what these funds actually do. Now, this one over here, VTI, is actually the entire total stock market. So what it's doing is it's tracking the index of the CRSP US Total Market Index. Kind of think of it like you own all of the winners and all of the losers of the stock market. Total market, and that's what VTI stands for, Vanguard Total Index. Over here, we have VOO, and what they do is they track the S&P 500. Now, what the S&P 500 is, 500 largest companies in the stock market. These have an incredible market cap. These are the nice, solid, trustworthy companies that a lot of you know and love. Now, as far as overall holdings, the beautiful thing about either one of these because it's an ETF, you're not just buying one single stock. You're not just buying into Apple. You're not just buying into Tesla. You're buying into the ETF, which holds hundreds, if not thousands of stocks. Over here, VTI, get ready for this, has a total of 3,935 total holdings as of the recording of this video. That is a ton. So anytime you buy one share of VTI, your money gets spread across all the different holdings that they have in the ETF. Over here on VOO side, they have right now, because it is the S&P 500, 507 total holdings. Next up is a similarity between both of these, expense ratio. 0.03%, 0.03%. That means for every $10,000 invested, you're gonna be paying $30. What a low expense ratio. Guys, when you look at ETFs, they all come with an expense ratio because there's management fees, there's certain fees as related to managing the ETF. With these passive funds, I always like to look at something that's less than 0.30%. So this is much lower than that, it only is 0.03. So really the expense is almost not even worth talking about, but it's important to know. They've both been around for quite a long period of time. VTI takes the crown as far as the longest. It started up on May 24th, 2001. VOO kicked off in 2010, specifically on September 7th, 2010. So it is uh, celebrating its 11th birthday this month. And this is probably the biggest difference I see between the two, this next one. Over here on VTI, now because you're investing in the total stock market index, one thing you gotta keep in mind, you not only have holdings in the large cap companies, but you're gonna get the small and mid cap companies. Now what that means, especially if you're a beginner, is that you have a lot of small companies. Maybe they're just emerging, they're starting off, they're growing, then you have the mid caps, maybe they're, they've been around for a little bit, but they're still not as large as your Apples and Teslas and things like that. And then of course the large cap, 
are the Apples and Teslas and things like that. So the cool thing about owning that whole entire stock market is that you have an opportunity to maybe have a breakout company. So let's say with NBTI, there's this small company that really rises up to fame. It starts really growing its market cap. It starts really going up in value. And because you're part of that via VTI, you get to take that ride. Kind of cool. Over here though, on the VOO side, because you're specifically invested in the S&P 500, these are typically all large cap stocks. Both of these really grew at almost the same rate over the last 10 years. Check this out. So on VTI, they have a growth over the last 10 years of a 14.7% return. VOO over the last 10 years, as of the recording of this video, has a 14.8. Talking about a 0.1% difference. These two are very similar. Now there's gonna be a lot of similarities between what these ETFs actually hold. And let's take a look at that. I'm gonna pull up on my iMac so you can follow along with me. So we'll start with VTI again. You can find this directly on the Vanguard website. Here it is and you can see, I actually sorted this by the percentage of what they own. Now when you buy one share, a VTI, VOO, whatever, that doesn't mean that your money is evenly split among all 3,900 holdings in the case of VTI or all 507 holdings in the case of VOO. No, it's based on the percentage of what they invest in. So you can see here, for example, we have 5.07% of the funds within VTI is invested in Apple. Coming up next is Microsoft, then after that is Amazon, Facebook, and then the two different classes of Google stock, and then Tesla, and so on and so on. In fact, what's really cool about the Vanguard website, it just makes it easy. You can actually look through their entire holdings list if you wish to do so. But you're always gonna probably find, at least right now, Apple, Microsoft, and a lot of the big tech companies are gonna be near the top because they have a lot of growth factors, and of course, what they wanna do in these type of funds is give you growth. And that's a good way to do it. So that's VTI. Let's take a look at VOO, and I think we'll see a little bit of a difference here. So here we are, 500 holdings, but look at the percentage difference. You now have 6.12% into Apple. You have a little bit more into Microsoft. There's our Amazon. There's Facebook. There's Google. So very similar, but you can see the percentages are much higher than VTI. Because again, unlike the VTI fund, which holds a lot of small companies and mid-range companies, this is specific to the top 500 companies in the United States. That, honestly, guys, is the biggest difference between both of these. And you might ask yourself, well, wait a minute. Okay, which one should I just get? Should I get both of them? Do I need both of them if they both kind of do the same type of thing? Well, let's take a look at the price performance in my favorite website, the Portfolio Visualizer. Now, you can do this yourself absolutely free. That's what I love about this website. I love things that are free because I'd rather be investing my money than spending my money. So let's check it out. So just kind of explain what I have going on here. We're talking year over year from 2011 to 2021. We're gonna put in 10 years because I think that's a great way to start with it. We're gonna invest $10,000 and not a penny more throughout the next 10 years, but we are gonna reinvest the dividends. In portfolio one, I'm gonna have VTI. In portfolio two, I'm gonna have VOO. Now, check this out. I'm gonna scroll down here. Look at this. You might only see like one line, but there's actually two, I promise. There's two lines in here. And the blue is the total stock market. The blue is basically VTI. The red is VOO. But look at this. Just like I said earlier, we're talking about a 14.7% return against a 14.8% return. It's very similar. So these two are kind of brother and sister in a sense. Just there's an opportunity to own a little bit more with VTI. A lot of you guys ask, well, what about... V-U-G. Now, this is a Vanguard fund specifically focused on growth companies. In fact, if you look right here on Vanguard's website, we're talking about growth where they seek to track the performance of the U.S. large cap growth index. VTI has small, mid, and large. This is specifically only large, not S&P 500. We're only talking about large companies, but check this out. I come down here and we can see there's gonna be only a total of 287 holdings. I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier and I'm gonna sort this by their top holdings. Now, this one did kind of sort a little bit funny, but look at this. Remember what we saw with VTI and VOO? Look at VUG holding 10% of Apple within this ETF. That's quite high compared to the other two. But then we see over 9% for Microsoft, we see 6% for Amazon. These percentages are higher because this is all kind of right now based on the industry trend that we're in, it's all about that big tech company. So this is where you're gonna see a little bit more of an opportunity. But let's stack that up in the portfolio visualizer. We're going to invest our $10,000 over the 10 years between 2011 and 2021, 
And this time in portfolio number three, we are going to select VUG. And there it is, Vanguard Growth. And in portfolio three, we're gonna do 100%, okay? So portfolio one is VTI, portfolio two is VOO, and portfolio three is VUG. Let's say you have like three buddies and each of them decide we're gonna throw $10,000 in. Let's see who becomes rich over the next 10 years and you made this bet in 2011. Well, let's see who wins the game. Keeping in mind, we got VUG, which is that growth fund. So here's what we got. Do you see the difference here? Do you see where things get serious? Earlier, we talked about VTI, we talked about VOO, and how those things were neck and neck. But check out VUG. Around this time, now you can see, look at this, all this time, it's kind of like hanging out with its uh, brother and sister there on VTI and VOO, but then it gets serious right here. And of course, what we're seeing, especially in 2021, is a significant focus on those growth stocks. I mean, think about what you hear on YouTube. A lot of people are talking about Tesla, Apple, they're talking about all these big tech companies and a lot of people are flooding their money into these companies because a lot of different reasons why. Well, obviously that's gonna help skyrocket something like VUG. Now, one thing you gotta keep in mind though is making sure that you're diversified even when it comes down to ETFs. So back to your main question, what do I do? BTI, VOO, or now you're gonna throw in this VUG, what should I do? Here's what I always look at. I like to ensure that I'm diversified across a growth portfolio, across a total portfolio, like a VTI or a VOO, some international, and then some bonds. So you got growth, you got your total, you got your international, and you got your bonds. And the reason you want that, bonds being kind of the more boring stuff, is that you kind of hedge against different trends in the market. For example, you could have a little bit of a dip on bonds right now, especially with inflation, but now growth companies are taking off. At any moment, maybe the market turns a little bit and start going down, but then the international market takes off. It's kind of a little bit of a way to balance yourself out. But remember, I'm just some dude here on YouTube that looks a little bit like Woody. Do your own financial research, especially with this next tip that might get you pretty excited. Now, if you hold VTI, VOO, or any of these funds in a tax-advantaged account, which would be like a 401k, an IRA, or a Roth IRA, this tip won't really necessarily apply, but let's say you have a Webull account, and in Webull, you said, you know what? Every month, I'm gonna invest $500 into one of these funds. That's what I'm gonna do. But it's only gonna be one of these funds. It's not gonna be both VTI and VOO. I'm only gonna do VTI. That's what I'm gonna stick with. Well, here's what's a little bit interesting that you could do if you're afraid the market might drop. If the market would go down by 30%, like it did in March of 2020, you could essentially lock in a loss on one of the funds, let's say it's VTI, and then just jump right into the other one. So you would sell on a VTI, you would buy into VOO, and what this does is it allows you to apply the realized loss against any future realized gains. And then at the same time, you're losing no time in the market along the way because you're basically buying at the dip. Again, check with your CPA, check with your tax person, do your own financial research. But this is another interesting way to play VTI and VOO together, especially with market returns that are almost exactly similar. Now here's the next video you should check out and here's a video YouTube thinks you're gonna like. If you enjoy personal finance content, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Nice.